Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 4, Lesson 1, Graphing Linear Functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to graph linear functions by making a table of values and graph linear functions by using the x and y intercepts. Let's learn graphing linear functions by using tables. A table of values can be used to graph a linear function. Every ordered pair that makes the equation true represents a point on the graph. So a graph essentially represents all the solutions of an equation. And then linear functions can be represented by equations of two variables, meaning x and y. Example one, graph by making a table. Graph negative two x minus three equals y by making a table. Here we have three steps. So first we're gonna choose any values of x from the domain and make a table. Then we're gonna plug each value that we chose from x into our equation to figure out the y. Then we're gonna take our x and our newly found y to make a coordinate. Last, we're going to graph those coordinates and connect them with a line. If we did it correctly, our points should make a straight line. First, they gave us some values to use. So negative four, negative two, zero, one, and three. We're gonna plug each of those in to our equation part up here to equal y. If we plug in negative four, we get negative two times negative four, which is positive eight, minus three, we get five. So if we plug in x as negative four, we get out y as five, which would make the coordinate negative four, five. Doing the same thing for negative two, plugging in negative two, we would get out one for y, making our coordinate negative two, one. We can keep doing this for the other three numbers. Plugging in zero, we get negative three. Plugging in one, we get negative five. Plugging in three, we get negative nine. I just plugged in x and figured out what y was equal to and then used those two things as my coordinate. Once we have all our coordinates, we can graph them. So here they already graphed it for us, but as you can see, they took each coordinate, so here's negative four, five, right here, and graphed it. Then they had negative two, one, they plotted that point. Zero, negative three, one, negative five, and three, negative nine is down here, kind of hidden on that arrow. Then last, they connected them with a straight line. For this, we know we're doing it correctly if our dots are in a straight line. If there's anything off slightly, or if you're connecting it and your line bends a little, something's wrong. Also notice, they put arrows on the end to show that it would keep going in either direction if we had more space. Check your understanding. Graph y equals 2x plus 5 by using a table. So plug in the values they gave you for x, determine what the y's come out to be, and plot those points. Don't forget to connect it with a straight line and put arrows at the end to show it would keep going. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. If you plugged in those values for x, here are the values you should have got for y. Then plotting those points, negative five, negative five, negative three, negative one, negative one, three, zero, five, and two, nine, we can connect them all with a straight line, so we figured it out correctly. Example two, choose appropriate domain values. In the previous example, it didn't matter what values we chose for x. No matter what we plugged in, they came out relatively easy and we were able to get coordinates that worked nicely. Sometimes, however, we're gonna be given a problem that looks more like this, where we have a fraction involved. We wanna graph y equals 1 fourth x plus three. This time, if you notice, they didn't use like one, two, three, four, five. They used negative eight, negative four, zero, four, and eight. Why do you think they chose those numbers? Well, if you look at where X is, it's connected to that one fourth. The numbers they chose were all easily divisible by four. So when you're picking your numbers, pick the ones that you can easily divide by what is in the denominator. So all these easily divide by four, so we're gonna use them. Then when we plug those in, one fourth of negative eight or negative eight divided by four comes out to be negative two plus three, we get one. By doing this, 
we end up with coordinates that will be easy to graph rather than some that are going to be in between the spaces. Continuing to evaluate them, if we plug in negative 4, we get 2. Plugging in 0, we get 3. Plugging in 4, we get 4. And 8 gives us 5. Now I can plot all of these points, connect them with a straight line, and we have our graph of our equation. Check your understanding. Graph y equals 3 fifths x minus 2 by making a table. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. If you plug in the values they gave you for x, you get those values for y. Again, notice they chose numbers that were easily divisible by 5. So if you took your x value, divided it by 5, then multiplied it by 3, it came out nicely. But we only care about being divisible by 5. Graphing our points, our line would end up looking like this. Example 3. Graph y equals a. So graph y equals 5 by making a table. First, this time, it doesn't look like what we had before. There is not a y and an x. So we're going to rewrite the equation to show that there are 0 x's. y equals 0 x plus 5. Now, we can plug in our values like we did before. If I plug in negative 2, I just multiplied that by 0, and then added 5, I got 5. If I plugged in negative 1, multiplying by 0 to get 0, adding 5, I also got 5. No matter what I plug in, I got the same thing out. I always get 5. So my coordinates, when I'm plotting them, end up making a horizontal line. So if you ever come across a y equals a number, it's going to be a horizontal line through the number that they tell you. So here, y equals 5 is on the line 5 up. Example 4, graph x equals a. So last we saw y equals a, this time it's x equals a. So graph x equals negative 2. In the previous example, we saw that y equals a made graphs that are horizontal lines. So kind of opposite of that, x equals a are going to have graphs that are vertical lines. So x equals negative 2 is just going to be a vertical line that is at negative 2 for the x value. So negative 2 spaces to the left. We would do the same as before, plot our points, connect with a line. One thing I do want you to know is if you are given a line that is x equals a number, we can graph the line, but it is not a function, since the same x gives us many different y's. So a vertical line is not a function. Check your understanding. Graph x equals 6. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have made a vertical line through 6, so 6 spaces over. Again, x equals a number makes a vertical line, where y equals a number will make your horizontal line. Let's learn. Graphing linear functions by using the intercepts. You can graph any linear function given only two points on the line. So using the x and y intercepts is common because those two points are easy to find. The intercepts provide ordered pairs of two points through which the graph will pass. And we learned in module 3 where to find the x and y intercepts. If we have a graph, your y-intercept is where it crosses somewhere on the y-axis, and your x-intercept is wherever it crosses on the x-axis. So if we can find those two points, then we can connect them to make our line. Example 5. Graph by using intercepts. Graph negative x plus 2y equals 8 by using the x and y-intercepts. So first, to find the x-intercept, we're going to make y equal to 0 because it's on the x-axis, so it's going to be a number, how many over, but 0 up. Then we can take our equation, and we can just replace y with 0. When we do this, multiplying by 0 pretty much just eliminates it, so I like to think that it's gone. I will just cross it out. So what I'm left with is negative x equals 8. 
Now, we want to know what positive x is, so we still need to divide both sides by negative 1, and doing that, we get x is equal to negative 8. Now that we know we have x equals negative 8, this would mean that the graph is going to intersect at negative 8, 0. This is our x coordinate, 0 is our y coordinate. Similarly, to find the y intercept, we're just going to let x equals 0. We're going to do the same thing, except this time, we're going to replace x with 0. So just like last time, I'm going to cross it out. I'm going to solve for y, 2y equals 8. So if I divide both sides by 2, I get y equals 4. This means that if I plug in x as 0, I get 4 out for y, so 0, 4. Now I can use those two coordinates to make my graph. So our x-intercept was at negative 8, 0. Our y-intercept was at 0, 4. Now I have two points. I just connect them with a line through. And just like before, I use the arrows to show that it would keep going. But this is what that line would look like. Check your understanding. Graph 4y equals negative 12x plus 36 using the x and y intercepts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have found that if you plug in y is 0, the x-intercept is 3. If you plug in x is 0, your y-intercept, you get 9. So your intercepts are 3 and 9. Plotting those points, x is 3 would be there, y is 9 is up there. Connecting those two dots, we have this line. Example 6, use intercepts. Our real-world context here is pets. Angelina bought a 15-pound bag of food for her dog. The bag contains about 60 cups of food, and she feeds her dog two and a half or five halves cups of food per day. The function y plus five halves x equals 60 represents the amount of food left in the bag y after x days. Graph the amount of food left in the bag as a function of time. So part A. Find the x and y intercepts and interpret their meaning in the context of the situation. Just like we saw before, to find the x intercept, let's make y equal 0. Then we're going to plug in 0 for y and solve for x. So 5 halves x equals 60. To get rid of a fraction, remember we just multiply by the reciprocal. So multiplying each side by 2 fifths would give us 24. This means that the x-intercept is 24, so it intersects the x-axis at 24, 0. In context, this would mean that after 24 days, there is zero dog food left, since x meant the number of days and y meant the food left in the bag. For our y-intercept, let's make x equal to 0. Then we're going to plug in 0 for x. This one's a lot faster. We end up canceling out the x and just having y equals 60. Here, if the y-intercept is 60, it's going to intersect at 0, 60. Again, since x is the number of days and y is the amount of dog food, that would mean that after 0 days, there are still 60 cups of food in the bag, which makes sense because she hasn't fed any food from that bag yet if it's at 0 days. Part B, graph the equation using the intercepts. So here we can see our y-intercept is at 0, 60, and our x-intercept is at 24, 0. And then our line would represent then the amount of food that is left as we go day by day. So around day 20, there are about 10 cups of food left. At around day 10, my prediction, there's about 35 cups of food left. So that line is all the same after how many days how many cups of food are left. For any of these problems, we can also just type our equation into Desmos and it will graph for us, which is especially helpful. And when it graphs, you can actually click on the intercepts. So this dot here is our y-intercept. This dot here is our x-intercept. And we can use this to help us graph our problems and interpret what it means. In fact, if you click and drag on the line, you can move a dot wherever. It doesn't stay, but I can see there, I predicted that 10 was at 35, 
just based on what the line looked like, I can see that if I were to click and hold on around 10, that my Y value is 35. I can also use this to predict how much of the Y value is there after how many X values were given. So in this last one, it was how much dog food after how many days. Check your understanding, read through the situation, determine the X and Y intercepts, and which graph uses those X and Y intercepts to correctly graph the equation. And you may use Desmos to help you with this problem if you would like. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. First, you should have found the x-intercept is at 6,543 and your y-intercept is at 4,362. Then which graph is using those? So x should be at 6,543. Here's 6,000, not the right area. That one looks like it's correct. That one looks like it's correct. That's not the right area. The y-intercept, 4,362. That one's good. That one's good. Which one is correctly graphed though? This one doesn't have the line. So C would be our correct graph. And if you notice in this one, they didn't necessarily draw the arrows to keep it going. Since in certain contexts, it doesn't make sense to have negative values. For example, here you couldn't have a negative amount of peanut butter and you couldn't have a negative amount of peanuts. So they just stop at the axis before it goes negative. 